Long before laptops, cell phones, Facebook, Twitter, and running tap water, women gathered at the water wells near their homes to visit and catch up on the latest news and gossip. In the Bible, several women, including the Samaritan woman, experienced a once-in-a-lifetime encounter at the water well. Women in today's society are no different. They're ready and willing to connect. You can see them chatting across the back fence at the office, the gym, and the supermarket. This was also evidenced during the summer of 2010 after a youth unique group was formed at Edmond, Oklahoma called Women at the Well. Ladies of all ages, ethnic, racial, and religious backgrounds were invited to the weekly gatherings and they were told to bring other women. The Friday midday meetings were held at First Presbyterian Church of Edmond. Soon the coordinators discovered the women breaking down barriers as they shared coffee, prayer, painting, jewelry making, and crafts. Others helped with language interpretations. Some women shared stories about goals, obstacles, careers, finance, and what they had learned along Along the way. The six original women who wrote the proposal for Women at the Well were Lee Miller and Robin Spa from Santa Fe Presbyterian, along with Cherise Miller Barcelo, Melinda Norton, Sissy Tubb, and Mona Ernest from First Presbyterian of Edmond. As you will see and hear, the Women at the Well represent many nationalities living, working, and attending class in Edmond. Mona Ernest knows the loneliness of being far away from family and friends, but she now calls Edmond her home. I am Pakistani, but I grew up in the Middle East. I am now a Christian. I converted three years ago. We just really prayed about who God would send to us. And one of the things that we really thought about is how, especially women from Middle Eastern cultures and other cultures, they're really lacking. I mean, sometimes they don't have a, a ride to get to where they want. For the American women, it's just a diversity, enlarging their kind of circle of influence. What do you think God would think about this? I think it's right up his alley. <laughs> but I never really talked to different ladies before from different cultures. What have you learned? Well, do you know, I, I met a lady here that was, she was from Japan, and I don't know, she was just a real nice lady. I learned that they're just like we are, except they're uh, different, maybe a different color. My name is Ning Ni, N-I-N-G-L-I. And what country are you from? From China. What do you like about the program? Um, we can, we could uh, meet a lot of ladies from different countries and talk to each other and uh, uh, we can learn something like painting, some handwork, so that's what I like. Your home country is South Korea. I now I major in TESOL, teaching English as a second language. So um, to uh, get master degree in, at UCU, so I came here. I have been here for about two years. Uh, I'm studying right now. What do you like about being here every week? Yeah, I feel comfortable and. I really want to know other women's thinking and culture. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm 14. What school do you go to? Memorial High School. So what do you like about being around these different women of ages and cultures? It's interesting to hear their stories. Like, you know, this one of the girl is like 80 years old and she was telling the story from when she was like five and it's way different time from now. So did you ever think you'd be in a group like this? No. <laughs> I'm very shy. What country are you from or culture? I was born in China. I go to this church and it um, sounds like a wonderful idea. When women of different cultures come together, what do you think happens? You uh, understand that country a little better. It changes your stereotypes of that country, of what you hear in the news, like Iran and Iraq. I'm not from a different country. I'm from Ohio. My culture would be Italian. Who have you met that's been really interesting to you? Jennifer, with the way she's able to translate and help the women from Middle Eastern countries acclimate into the culture here. And Veronica, the gourds she grew so that we could paint them. 
morning. What do you think God would think about this? I think he would love it. I think that that's what we're meant to do. Even though we all come from different walks of life, that we all have so many similarities. We're a very multicultural family, and that's the way I was raised, and that's the way we're going to raise our daughter. I love the thought of getting to know the ladies from the other countries. God loves women. They are the crown of his creation. I love this. In Hebrew, the, man, the name for man is Ish, but the name for woman is Isha. Like, ah, <laughs> woman. And women are just a beautiful creation. Uh, many cultures look down on women. And I love that in America, women are honored. It's kind of neat to be able to bring honor where honor is due. Uh, to women who love well, who raise their families, um, serve their husbands, um, and serve their community. Okay, honestly, well, I complained and complained and complained <laughs> and complained for years to this church, and I was like, there's nothing for women, so you got to find something. Do you think in the time you've been here that it's caused you to grow in some way? No, because... I've always been aware of women in the community because at our church, one of our members was the, the mayor of Edmond, Sandra Nafee, so I have always known about women's groups. Um, my mom was a member of a local chapter called PEO of, you know, educated women that do things and charity. Are you able to take something away different? Yes. I'm not very good at painting or doing crafts or anything, but I didn't want it to be an excuse of, I can't do it, so I tried it, and now I have proof that it still looks bad. <laughs> but I tried. I'm from Italy. I, was here, I came to the country when I was 14, and I had to learn the different ways here. And with my boys, I noticed that even though my background is much different than, than here, I had to adjust. In my country, we're more family oriented. I visit my family back in Italy. I can see the you know unity of them. There is a mother in Italy different than mother in America. No, no, it's the same. <laughs> like they say in Italy, you a mother can raise a thousand children, but a children cannot help than one mother. Okay. What do you like about women at the well? I love meeting all these people from all these different backgrounds. It's so interesting to me to talk to people from China, from Korea, some from Iran, some Iraq, South America. I think it's always a blessing when women get together, no matter what group they're from, and this is especially wonderful with the different faiths that are involved that we can share and share a commonality as women, not as Baptist women or a Methodist woman, but as God's children, that it's just been a precious experience. I am from Guatemala City. What do you think has been unique about women at the well? I will say number one, being reunited here as sisters. This, you know, well, I think, you know, by the end of this program, it doesn't matter, you know, what we come to learn here, you know, with our hands. What's important is uh, to know that, uh, that we are uh, sharing, you know, uh, the love and compassion of our Jesus Christ. We want to live peacefully with each other. I think it's important that we get to know each other, especially nationalities that we're not familiar with, so that we get to know them better, not just superficially, but to get to know them and their hearts and their desires and their anxieties and what's important to them. What is your heritage? I'm half uh, Persian and half Pakistani. My mother was from Iran and my father is from Pakistan. Historically, looking at this event uh, for the city of Edmond, what do you think is unique about it? It's more diverse than what I originally thought it was when I first came here like three years ago. I hadn't gotten out much, so I felt kind of alone. But once I came to this church and I realized that there really is a big group of you know Middle Eastern people here, I ended up feeling more at home, more okay with who I am. For a long time, I've been trying to find a like, purpose for myself and uh, come to realize that my Farsi is really helping a lot of the Persian women here come closer to God and feel okay to come to our church and that it's not a sin and that you know they do have somebody to relate to. 
My name is Nazanin Chugtai, and I'm from Iran. What's been a highlight for you coming to Women at the Well? Well, you get to see different uh, varieties of like, women, you know, you get to like, interact with people. And BSL, English the second language. It's been, been refreshing to my career, and I really enjoy the idea of getting to meet people from other countries. We're learning the Arabic words for some things, and uh, Kunama, and Karen, and Chin, <laughs> as well as Vietnamese. I think that's just enriching for all of us. I learned here that it's wonderful to socialize with different women, and I've really met a lot of new people. We painted also, and that was fun. I learned what I can do and what I can't. <laughs> Are you her mom? I'm her mom, Denise Heitman. And for you, what's been special? Enjoying time with my children here and meeting new people and having fun doing crafts, and the devotion always seems to touch home. I enjoy that, how God speaks through so many different ways and hearing his word each week. I'm a housewife. Oh, you're a housewife. <laughs> What's been good for you coming here? Yeah, to meet a lot of ladies. Yeah, we can know each other, talk to each other, and learn a lot of things. You're from Korea. Tell me what's been special coming here for you. I love America. It has been my dream because this is gospel-based country and because I want to know about God and the words and the Bible. I want to meet a lot of God's people. And in meeting God's people, what do you think he would think about this gathering? Oh, it's awesome. What made you come to America? I came here because of the nice people in the, the government that uh, makes freedom for people that I decided. What is your training? What is your career? My education uh, is the first uh, bachelor is uh, applied chemistry and the second is painting and my MS is uh, art study. And when I was in Iran, I worked as a, a painter teacher. Yeah. What kind of job will you do here? I want to uh, follow my uh, painting. Yeah. And I understand that you were one of the six women that got together for this whole idea. How has it turned out? God has been so, so gracious in this and brought people together in the most amazing ways, created strong bonds between women. What kind of barriers do you think that this might have begun to break? I think we spend time together in classes, in worship, but we don't have time to talk. That's what's missing from many of our activities. And this has given us that opportunity. My name is Bi Hwa Kim from Korea. Women at the Well, how have you enjoyed it? It was very impressed. Yeah. Uh, all the women uh, to prepare for this great program were so kind and uh, nice. And so I learned uh, a lot of uh, uh, craft and friendship from this program. So I love them. Thank you so much for the program. The 12 week Women at the Well project culminated with a wonderful celebration of ethnic dishes and desserts prepared by the women. Many were sad to see the program come to an end and promised to stay in touch. During the closing devotion, Rebecca Staten told the ladies that many of them were in similar circumstances like the Samaritan woman and others in the Bible who had unique experiences at water wells. Jesus told her that he had water that will keep her from ever being thirsty again. Rebecca said he used the water as a metaphor to teach us about the living water which gives eternal life and grace. Many of us came to the program each week, she said, not expecting much, and some may have had an encounter that will change their life forever. The important lesson to be learned is that Christ Jesus knows everything about each of us, including the outcasts and those looked down upon. He loves us all and came to give everyone eternal life, says Rebecca. So as the people of the world become more mobile, the idea of gathering around a table, regardless of race, ethnicity, or heritage, becomes a key aspect of relating to people we're trying to get to know, love, and trust. So look out, Edmund. More women are coming to the well, breaking down barriers as they dare to share their past, present, and future, making their mark on history as extraordinary women of God.